Pancakes 201. So you've mastered basic American-style pancakes. Here's some ideas about how you can make them fluffier, prettier, fruitier, or more of a chocolatey, sugary, late-night abomination. If you need the basic primer, my Pancakes 101 video is linked in the description, and I'll start here with my basic batter. In a large, heat-safe measuring jug goes two tablespoons of butter, 30 grams. Throw that in the microwave until it's not quite melted. Swish it around until it's liquid. Now we have melted butter that isn't too hot. A couple tablespoons of sugar, like 30 grams. At this point, you could absolutely just beat in the egg, or you could take a page from the Belgian waffle playbook and separate the yolk and the white. Yolk goes in the butter and sugar, white goes in a bowl that should seem too big for the task, and you beat it up. With an electric hand mixer, it literally takes a minute to get to stiffish peaks like that. Set those aside for a sec, grab a fork or a little whisk or something, and beat that stuff up smooth before you reach for the milk or buttermilk, fermented milk. It makes a huge difference in pancakes, it tastes delicious, and because it's so viscous, it makes the batter thicker without making it tougher, which flour will do. Enough to get two total cups of liquid, so I put in like 400 mils. Big splash of vanilla, teaspoon of salt, like six grams. Many recipes, including my prior one, tell you to leaven this batter by neutralizing the acidic buttermilk with baking soda. I hereby retract that. Double-acting baking powder works better because of the delayed reaction it gets you, the boost of gas you get when the batter starts cooking. A heaped tablespoon, like 16 grams, and you could put in a little baking soda too if you wanted. This will get you some additional lift and reduce how acidic the buttermilk tastes, but if you like the acidity, forget it. You could use regular flour, but I'm going to use cake flour. This will get you pancakes that are more tender and moist. About two cups or 230 grams, but I really just eyeball this. I stir in flour until I like the texture. Though, because we have the additional moisture of the egg whites yet to come, we have to mix this until it's a little thicker than we'd normally want it. I'm really shooting for a pudding-like consistency. And remember to just barely mix it together. Little lumps are fine. If you overmix the liquid in the flour, the pancakes will be tough. Now, here is why we whipped the egg whites in an excessively large bowl. Batter in, and then we'll just cut and fold, cut and fold, trying to integrate that egg foam while popping as few bubbles as possible. Done. I'm using my electric griddle. Greasing it with butter is delicious, but that gets you a spackled appearance on the pancake surface that you might not like. If you want that very even blonde surface, I think the easiest way to get that at home is to use a Teflon nonstick surface and don't grease it at all. No fat on the griddle. This has another advantage in that it allows you to cook at a higher than normal temperature. I normally do pancakes on like two and a half out of five. I'm using three and a half. As always, scooping the batter with a measuring cup is the easiest way to get pretty clean round shapes. If we'd greased the griddle, the pancakes would burn at this temperature, but without the grease, we can cook these hotter, which cooks them quicker and gets you more lift. When bubbles start popping in the center, they're ready to flip. Lordy, even with all this extra space, I still managed to overlap them. But you see what I mean about that even blonde finish? And check this out. Look at how high these are rising. That's two things, the double acting baking powder and the egg foam. Insanely fluffy and so thick that they need some extra time to cook inside. I wait until there's no sign of gooey batter on the sides, and then I cook them for another minute. Out to a cooling rack, which helps to avoid the steamy, soggy bottom you get if you put them straight on the plate. However, if you want some melted butter on these, you might want to put it on now instead of on the plate. They might not be hot enough to melt the butter if you wait until they're on the plate. Syrup on, and just wait till you see how fluffy the interior of these is. Egg foams do tend to make cakes a little firmer, but I think using cake flour balances out that effect. So pillowy, it blows your mind. And you can blow your mind some more with the sponsor of this video, Curiosity Stream, whom I'll now briefly thank. Curiosity Stream is a streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles on nearly any subject you can imagine. I've been watching this 10-part series on the world's great central marketplaces. This is the one in the capital of Latvia, Riga. What's that on the bottom? It's baked on maple leaves. Once very common, the rye bread vanished from the market. But now it's making a comeback, thanks to country people like Zaiga Gavare. I want that bread, but there's documentaries here about quantum physics, cute little animals, anything you're curious about. Dogs. And it costs hardly any bread at all, just $2.99 a month. That's way less than other streaming services. And it gets even cheaper if you sign up for a full year, $20 for a year. You can watch anywhere, mobile, your computer, Roku, Apple TV, whatever. If you're stuck inside a lot these days and you feel like your brain is shrinking, feed it with Curiosity Stream. You get your first month free if you follow my link in the description and use my promo code Ragusia. That's all down in the description. Thank you, Curiosity Stream. Now, say you want fruit in your pancake. 
pancakes. Blueberries are the classic choice, and you could just dump them in the batter, but by the time the pancakes were done, the berries would break down a lot, and that would make the inside kind of soggy. Some people like that, but I prefer to place my berries right before the flip. You can do the same with chocolate chips if you want to avoid the chocolate oozing out. The pancakes are almost done, and if I flip this around, you can see how cooked those blueberries already look. If they'd been in this whole time, they'd be blueberry jam by now. Out to the cooling rack to steam off, and look at those beautiful berries hiding in there. Rather than use maple syrup, let's stay on theme and use raspberry syrup. How did I make that? Some raspberries. Great way of using ones that are looking a little rough. You need a lot to make syrup, but you don't need a lot of this syrup because it's pretty strong. A little water in there to get them started cooking, and then boil them until they just start to fall apart. It'll happen in minutes. Sieve over a bowl and drain. Mash the pulp. Look at how much the seeds swelled up in the boiling water. That's good. It'll keep them from squeezing through the sieve. That juice goes back in the pan along with a roughly equal quantity of sugar, and I'll boil it until it just gets syrupy. That means the bubbles start to stack on themselves, and the spoon leaves little trails off the heat. This will thicken a lot as it cools. You can just spoon that over your pancakes, but I'm going to be fancy and pour it into my squeeze bottle. It's way stronger than maple syrup, so go easy. And we can cut the acidity of that with a nice dollop of whipped cream. Just a cup of cream, beat it with a hand mixer until it's fluffy and you're leaving trails, add sugar and vanilla to taste, and keep it sealed in the fridge. That is way fancier than anything I usually make for myself, but damn it, I'm worth it. Okay, that's breakfast. Skip ahead 16 hours and we need a midnight snack. Let's make chocolate pancakes. I'm doubling my sugar to balance the bitterness of the cocoa that's coming. Beat those egg whites and before we put in the milk or the buttermilk, maybe half a cup of cocoa powder, like 50 grams. I prefer Dutch cocoa. That's the kind that tastes like an Oreo. Mix that as much as you can and then, this is important, you gotta mix in the milk a tiny bit at a time until you get the cocoa powder dispersed. If you dump in all the liquid at once, you'll never get the cocoa powder smooth. If you're using natural cocoa, not Dutch, I'd probably recommend using regular milk instead of buttermilk. Natural cocoa is pretty acidic, and with the two acids together, that could be a lot. Alrighty, nice and smooth, salt, baking powder, enough cake flour to make it seem too thick. Remember, the egg foam will thin it out somewhat. And this time, I'm going to put in my mix-in straight to the batter. I want some chunks of marshmallow, so that's powdered sugar on the board, and I'm just chopping some marshmallows into it. Without the powdered sugar, everything would stick together. You could just buy mini marshmallows. I'm using what I had in the pantry, and I also have some beautiful Georgia pecans. Chop those up a bit. In the marshmallow goes, and you could do regular chocolate chips, but I've got some peanut chips. And yeah, we're going to need a bigger bowl. Get that all folded together, and then I'm going to butter my griddle, because this time I'm going for taste, not aesthetics. Speaking of which, when you have really big chunks mixed in a batter, it's virtually impossible to get nice round pancakes. The chunks are just too jagged. The marshmallow and everything will also start to really melt and ooze out and brown on the griddle, which you could say looks ugly, but it tastes real good. I'm excited. Out to the cooling rack. Look at that ooze marshmallow on the plate, and instead of maple syrup, let's hit that with some caramel sauce. How'd I make caramel sauce? A cup of sugar in a pan with a little water to get it melting, put it on medium-high heat, and boil it until it goes amber. Turn off the heat, and then in goes a roughly equal quantity of cream, but not all at once. It would literally explode a tiny bit at a time. See, that was just a few drops. Hot syrup is very dangerous stuff. Show it respect. If you don't have cream, you could use like one part butter to two parts milk. I'll let that cool down a bit so that I can put in salt to taste. And don't be afraid to put in a lot of salt. Salt is magic with caramel. It really rounds off the bitter notes. In that goes to the squeeze bottle and on the pancakes, chopped pecans. I love that textural contrast. And then a big dollop of our whipped cream. You can see how adding the mix-ins up front causes them to kind of melt through the pancake. If you don't like that, drop them in right before the flip. Okay, one last little experiment. I've loaded some of that chocolate batter into my squeeze bottle, minus the chunks, of course. My griddle is ungreased, and the temperature is on the low side. That's important. I'll just make a little 9 in there. Or is it a 9? Now, just wait until that seems to set up pretty solid, then grab a scoop of your regular batter and gently cover the chocolate shape. Wait for that to cook, and then there we go! P for pancake! Just remember to do a mirror image of whatever shape you want in the end, or this'll happen to you. You could make it easy on yourself and just do a swirly-do like that. Remember to let it set up solid before you put the white batter on top endless fun you can have with pancakes. Let me know what ideas you come up with next.